Hey there, my little cherub. It's my marvelous mind. Time for another story. This one is by another one of my favorite authors, Patricia Polacco. I hope I pronounced her last name correctly. Anyway, she's amazing. She writes some fantastic books, and you can even follow her on Facebook. You can see what she looks like looks like today, and even hear some of her stories being read by her. So today I'm reading. Thank you, Mr. Falker. I love her books. The grandpa held the jar of honey so that all the family could see, then dipped a ladle into it and drizzled honey on the cover of a small book. The little girl had just turned five. Stand up, little one, he cooed. I did this for your mother, your uncles, your older brother, and now you. Then he handed the book to her. Taste! She dipped her finger into the honey and put it into her mouth. What is the taste? Grandma asked. Little girl answered, sweet. Then all of the family said in a single voice, yes, and so is the knowledge. But knowledge is like the bee that made that sweet honey. You have to chase it through the pages of a book. The little girl knew that the promise to read was at last hers. Soon, she was going to learn to read. Trisha, the littlest girl in the family, grew up loving books. Her school teacher, mother, read to her every night. Her red-headed brother brought his books home from school and shared them. And whenever she visited the family farm, her grandfather or grandmother read to her by the stone fireplace. When she turned five and went to kindergarten, most of all, she hoped to read. Each day, she saw the kids in the first grade across the hall reading. Before the year was over, some of the kids in her own class began to read. Not Trisha. Still, she loved being at school because she could draw. The other kids would crowd around her and watch her do her magic with the crayons. In first grade, you'll learn to read, her brother said. She's quite the artist. In first grade, Trisha sat in a circle with the other kids. They were all holding our neighborhood, their first reader, sounding out the letters and the words. They said, b, b, oi, boy, and la. Look, look! The teacher smiled at them when they pulled all the sounds together and got a word right. But when Trisha looked at a page, all she saw were wiggly shapes. And when she tried to sound out the words, the other kids laughed at her. Trisha, what are you looking at in that book? They'd say. I'm reading, she'd say back to them. But her teacher would move on to the next person. Always was when it was her turn to read, her teacher had to help her with every single word. And while the other kids moved up to the second reader and the third reader, she stayed alone in our neighborhood. Trisha began to feel different. She began to feel dumb. I feel bad for her. The harder, harder words got for the little girl, the more and more time she spent drawing. How she loved to draw. Or just sitting and dreaming. Or when she could, going for walks with her grandmother. One summer day, she and her grandmother were walking together in the small woods behind their farm. It was twilight. The air was sweet and warm, and fireflies were just coming up from the grasses. As they walked, Trisha said, Grandma, do you think I'm different? Of course, her grandmother answered. To be different is the miracle of life. You see all those little fireflies? Everyone is different. Do you think I'm smart? Trisha didn't feel smart. Her grandma hugged her. You are the smartest, quickest, dearest little thing ever. Right then, the little girl felt safe in her grandma's arms. Reading didn't matter so much. What a sweet moment. Trisha's grandma used to say that the stars were all holes in the sky. They were the light of heaven coming from the other side. And she used to say that someday she would be on the other side where the light comes from. One evening, they lay on the grass together and counted the lights from heaven. You know, her grandma said, all of us will go there someday. Hang on to the grass or you'll lift right up off the ground and there you'll be. And they laughed and both hung on to the grass. But it was not long after that that her grandma must have let go of the grass. 
because she went to where the lights were on the other side. And not long after that, Trisha's grandpa let go of the grass too. School seemed harder and harder now. Reading was just plain torture. When Sue Ellen read or Tommy Bob read his page, they read so easily that Trisha would watch the top of their heads to see if something was happening in their heads that wasn't happening to hers. And numbers were the hardest thing of all to read. She never added anything right. Line the numbers up before you add them, the teacher would say. But when Trisha tried, the numbers looked like a stack of blocks wobbly and ready to fall. She just knew she was dumb. Then one day, her mother announced that she had gotten a teaching job in California, a long way from the family farm in Michigan. I feel bad for her having such a hard time. Even though her grandma and grandpa were gone, the little girl didn't want to move. Maybe, though, the teachers and kids in her new school wouldn't know how dumb she was. She and her mother and brother moved across the country in a two-tone two -tone 1949 Plymouth. It took five days. That's a long trip. But at the new school, it was the same. She tried to read. She stumbled over her words. The c c cat r r ran. She was reading like a baby in the third grade. And when her teacher read along with them and called on Trisha for an answer, she gave the wrong answer every time. Hey, dummy, a boy called out to her on the playground. How come you're so dumb? Other kids stood near him and they laughed. Trisha could feel the tears burning in her eyes. How she longed to go back to her grandparents' farm in Michigan. This makes me so sad. Now Trisha wanted to go to school less and less. I have a sore throat, she said to her mother. Or, or I have a stomach ache. She dreamed more and more and drew more and more, and she hated, hated, hated school. Then, when Trisha started fifth grade, the school was all of us. There was a new teacher. He was tall and elegant. Everybody loved his striped coat and silky gray pants, slick gray pants. He wore the neatest clothes. All the usual teacher's pets gathered around him. D.B. Joe and Alice Marie, Davy and Michael Lee. But right from the start, it didn't seem to matter to Mr. Falker. Which kids were the cutest or the smartest or the best at anything? He seems nice. Mr. Falker would stand behind Trisha whenever she was drawing and whisper, This is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Do you know how talented you are? When he said this, even the kids who teased her would turn around in their seats and look at her drawings. But they still laughed whenever she gave a wrong answer. Then one day, she had to stand up and read, which she hated. She was stumbling through a page in Charlotte's Web, and the page was going all fuzzy, and the kids began to laugh out loud. Mr. Falker, in his plaid jacket and his bird fly tie, said, Stop! Are all of you so perfect that you can look at another person and find fault with her? Wow. Well, That was the last day anyone laughed out loud or made fun of her, all except Eric. He sat behind Trisha for two whole years, but he seemed to almost hate her, and Trisha didn't know why. He waited by the door of the classroom for her and pulled her hair. He waited for her on the playground, leaned in her face, and called her a toad. Trisha was afraid to turn any corner for fear Eric would be there. She felt completely alone. The only time she was really happy when she was around Mr. Falker. He let her race the blackboards. Only the best students got to do that. He patted her on the back whenever she got something right. And he looked hard and mean at any kid who teased her. But the nicer Mr. Falker was to Trisha, the worse Eric treated her. He got all the other kids to wait for her in the playground or in the cafeteria or even in the bathroom and jump out and call her stupid or ugly. And Trisha began to believe them. She discovered that if she had to go to the bathroom just before recess, she could hide under the stairwell during free time and not have to go outside at all. And that dark place, 
she felt completely safe. But one day at recess, Eric followed her to her secret hiding place. Have you become a mole? He laughed and pulled her out in the hallway and danced around her. Dumbbell, dumbbell, maggoty old dumbbell. Trisha buried her head in her arms and curled up in a ball. Suddenly, she heard footsteps. It was Mr. Falker. He marched Eric down to the office. When he came back, he found Trisha. I don't think you'll have to worry about that boy again, he said softly. What was he teasing you about, little one? I don't know, Trisha shrugged. Trisha was sure that Mr. Falker believed that she could read. She had learned to memorize what the kid next to her was reading, or she would wait for Mr. Falker to help her with the sentence, then she'd say the same thing that he did. Good, he would say. Then one day, Mr. Falker asked her to stay after school and help wash the blackboards. He put on music and brought out little sandwiches as they worked and talked. All at once, he said, let's play a game. I'll shut out letters, and you write them on the board with the wet sponge as quickly as you can. A, he shouted. She wiped a watery A. Eight, he shouted. She made a watery eight. Fourteen, three, D, M, Q, he shouted out. He shouted out many, many letters and numbers. Then he walked up behind her together and they looked at the board. It was a watery mess. Trisha knew that none of the letters or numbers looked like they should. She threw the sponge down and tried to run. But Mr. Falker caught her arm and sank to his knees in front of her. You poor baby. You think you're dumb, don't you? How awful for you to be so lonely and afraid, she sobbed. But little one, don't you understand? You don't see numbers or letters the way other people do. And you've gotten through school all this time and fooled many, many good teachers, he smiled at her. That took cunning and smartness and such, such bravery. Then he stood up and finished washing the board. We're going to change all that, girl. You're going to read. I promise you that. Oh, I'm happy for her now. Someone's finally trying to help her. Now, almost every day after school, she met with Mr. Falker and Miss Pleasy, a reading teacher. They did a lot of things she didn't even understand. At first, she made circles in the sand and big sponge circles on the blackboard, going from left to right and right to left. Another day, they flipped letters on a screen and Trisha shouted them out loud. Still other days, she worked with wooden blocks and built words, letters, 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 words, 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 always selling them out, and that felt good. But though she read words, she hadn't read a whole sentence, and deep down, she still felt dumb. And then one spring day, had it been three months or four months and they had started, Mr. Falker put a book in front of her. She'd never seen it before. He picked a paragraph in the middle of the page and pointed at it, almost as if it were magic. Or as if a light poured into her brain, the words and sentences started to take shape on the page as they never had before. She marched them off to slowly. She read a sentence, then another, and another, and finally she read a paragraph, and she understood the whole thing. She didn't notice that Mr. Falker and Miss Pleasy had tears in their eyes. I was certain they were tears of joy. That night, Trish ran home without stopping to catch her breath. She bounded up the front steps, threw open her front door, and ran through the dining room kitchen. She climbed up on the cupboard and grabbed the jar of honey. Then she went to the living room and found the book on the shelf, the very book that her grandpa had shown her so many years ago. She spooned honey on the cover and tasted the sweetness, and said to herself, The honey is sweet, and so is knowledge. But knowledge is like the bee who made the honey. It has to be chased through the pages of a book. Then she held the book, honey, and all close to her chest. She could feel tears roll down her cheeks, but they weren't tears of sadness. She was happy, so very happy. The rest of the year became an odyssey of discover and adventure, discovery and adventure for the little girl. She learned to love school. I know, because that little girl was me, Patricia Polacco. That's the author. I saw Mr. Falker again some 30 years later at a wedding. I walked up to him and introduced myself. At first, he had difficulty placing me. Then I told him who I was and how he changed my life so many years ago. 
He hugged me and asked me what I did for a living. Why, well, Mr. Falker, I answered. I make books for children. Thank you, Mr. Falker. Thank you. What a wonderful story. And that, you know that she draws well as well, so she was the um, illustrator for this book. Now, your writing prompt for this book is, I bet you could probably figure it out. I want you to write a thank you letter or write an essay about someone that you're thankful for. If you write a thank you letter, actually mail it, send it by email or old-fashioned way with an actual stamp. I think it's good to let people know that we're thankful for them. And I know that there's somebody in your life that you're very thankful for. It may be a teacher, it may be a friend, it may be a parent, grandma, grandpa, it may be a neighbor, whoever it is. Let them know how you feel and tell them thanks. Remember your letter to include all the parts, the date, the greeting, the body, the closing, and the signature. Okay? I cannot wait to read your letters or your essays, whichever one you choose. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Remember, be kind. It's the right thing to do. Be your best because I know it's in you. You're incredible thinkers, boys and girls. And who knows, your marvelous mind just might change the world like Mr. Falker did for Patricia. All right, have a wonderful afternoon. Take care, be safe, and stay marvelous.